I was uh, the first Indian and the first woman to do a doctorate on the tiger in India and I was at um, the University of Oxford so there was a story waiting to happen and you combine that with the background about my family and you know uh, the back, the who we were, what we were doing, um, it just became this fantastic story um, that caught the eye of National Geographic, and they called me the Tiger Princess of India, and that's how I got um, the title. And you know, this was when I was 21, so it was it was incredible. It was every dream come true. lived in Kashmir and I spent most of my life every holiday in Kashmir and I practically grew up going in and out of Datigam National Park. So um, I always wanted to do a doctorate on the snow leopard, not tigers. And uh, the year that I was supposed to do my doctorate, terrorism broke out in a big way in Kashmir. And in uh, 1991, uh, the terrorists attacked our home, they killed seven staff and they used incendiary bombs and burnt down both of the houses. Luckily, my grandparents were in Delhi for a family wedding and um, escaped. But uh, you can imagine after that, it was impossible for me to go back to Kashmir. The family remained under threat for many years. Um, so I was then suddenly at this loss, I had no idea what I wanted to do and I was um, talking to Dr. H.S. Pavar who was the director of the Wildlife Institute of India and um, he threw a gauntlet at me and said, will you take up the challenge of doing the first scientific study on the tiger in India? And I said, yes, I will. decided I wanted to be an ecologist when I was six which is in the 70s so nobody had heard of the term and my father was one of the people who actually started and pioneered the wildlife conservation movement in India with many of his friends and he was uh, advisor to Mrs. Gandhi, uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi on wildlife. I had to overcome the challenge of people thinking that I was doing what I was doing because I came from a privileged background and my, I, I was my father's daughter. So I had to prove through my hard work that I was capable of being in that position, in that place, doing the work that I was doing on the dint of my capability and my dedication to the cause. And I, it, it's a huge challenge. People just don't take you seriously. And if you combine it with being a woman, combine it and being an Indian woman, then it would just be, you know, triples the challenge because people just look at you and you know, you're the only woman in a room full of men in any case. And um, people used to call me the girl in chiffon saris who goes into the jungles. And also they expect you to, to sort of be always in those khakis and browns and you need to look like a rough, tough outdoor person. And I don't look like a rough, tough outdoor person, you know, I just don't. I mean, that's the way I am. I'm 5'3", so I'm tiny. So people started finally taking me a little more seriously once I got my doctorate. Institute had been newly set up and there was a lot of political um, talk about what was happening at the Institute and the decision making about how the Institute was going to be and my father was one of the founding members of the governing body of the Wildlife Institute of India and I got caught in that political crossfire. People conducted an inquiry and they found out that it was uh, totally baseless so my grant was given back my professions were given back but it took a year and it was one of the toughest years of my life I was studying 
social organization i was studying behavior i was studying prey predator dynamics i was studying um distribution patterns um of prey i was uh, looking at uh, management issues um in terms of legislation i was looking at forest corridor and linkages and connectivity issues um so it would involve about on an average i was in the field 5 years 9 months of the year continuously sometimes working 16 18 hour days so it was a lot of work and you work day you work night you work through the rain you work through the heat you work through sub zero temperatures today when i sit and i look at all my other friends um who work in mainstream jobs um you know the life they had as a student growing up life on a campus uh life as young uh executives in in different companies the parties the the books they read the concerts they went to the the whole social life that they had i never had that i mean i lived in the jungle most of the time by myself um learned to to depend on myself for company uh and in in those days we didn't even have connectivity so there was no mobile phones there was no way of telling my parents whether i was okay or not um every you know weekend i would go into town and there would be one of those uh, telephone uh offices where you would you know go in and do these long distance trunk calls where you dial from this dial thing on the wall and extend it for 5 minutes at a time to get to the thing so it was it was a different era totally and and of course um taking photographs was a completely different thing because you had film in your cameras and the films had you know 30 something shots and you had to change films in the middle and so you could lose um you know an era really important moment because you ran out of film and you would not know what you've taken because you had to come back to the city um and develop it um and the same thing with camera traps i invented camera traps with the help of iit delhi to use for tiger monitoring and uh, you would get you know you would see bug marks coming up to the camera trap and then you could only hope that you know you'd got something and again it would be 3 or 4 months before you saw what you had got and were able to analyze um your studies so you know it was um, we actually invented camera traps using the sensors that are used for security cameras and they were quite big i mean something about that size for the two sensors and then you had a great big metal box with the camera inside which you had opened up and uh, attached wires to the circuitry and changed the whole circuit created a little circuit board which went into the camera so that it would be triggered by uh, you know animals covering the infrared beam and then i had these huge uh, iron uh, poles which we had to put into the ground and lay out all this wire and put these camera traps and the batteries would last one day so you had to go back to every camera trap every day to see if the film had finished and to see if the battery had finished and you never knew whether the film had finished before the tiger had got there or you'd actually got pictures of the tiger because if a if a bird or a monkey came and sat in front of the camera breaking the beam then you would get 36 pictures of monkey so you know you just it was it was just crazy and uh, it was uh, some days when we would be in the park moving you know and and i would i had permissions to be on foot so i have walked every inch of bangalore national park i have climbed the mountains i know every little water hole i know where uh, you know tigers go to drink where sambar kneel and find water inside rocks in the summer i know all the little places and we would go to these places and sometimes if by the time you got to the last few camera traps i had 21 pairs by the time you got to the last few ones it would be getting to dusk and there would be a lot of tiger movement and you would actually have to walk to one of these water holes and shoo the tiger off put your camera trap and run back out 
I've never really been terrified. Definitely an adrenaline rush and your heart goes boom, 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 boom in your chest, threatening to run out. Um, I've I've been attacked um, a few times. Um, most often, just a mock, just to warn me off. But a couple of serious charges as well. But I live to tell the tale, so it's okay. was close to minus 20 degrees centigrade which was snowing in Ladakh and this was about uh, 16,000 feet you could just see this little head moving on the on the silhouette and it was a snow leopard by some magic she decided she wanted to come to us so for the next three hours 40 minutes she walked down the hill looking straight into my camera talking to us non-stop actual vocalizing. She was less than 50 meters from us. Honestly, at that time, if I had died, I would have got died, you know, knowing in contentment that I had met a snow leopard. you are on National Geographic and people across the world know who you are and people know what you're doing but it also added a lot of problems to my life because people had way higher expectations from me uh, jealousy and envy became very very much a part of my work life um, a lot of people actually tried to put me down People uh, made sure I didn't get any high positions. There was a lot of opposition for what I did. Um, so there's a good to it, there's a bad to it, and it's something that I'm stuck with. <laughs> you know, it's it's a part of my life. But it's a part of, I think I need to move on from that now. And there's so much more to me than just being the Tiger Princess of India. But the Tiger Princess was a huge landmark in my life. It was important. Um, I will always uh, realize my responsibility to, to meet people's perceptions of being the Tiger Princess. But I think there's a lot more to me than that. I need to maybe tell a little bit of an incident, maybe from my own side, because I've now found the courage to talk about this. I've never really spoken about this, but I think it's really important that people know that like a lot of women in India today, I too faced um, domestic violence and problems from my husband that is why for 10 years I did no photography and I almost stopped going to national parks so as a woman going into these fields please understand that the family life will always be an issue but you need to not be afraid stand up take a stand make yourself heard there's plenty of support for you out there and if it is your dream to work in the field of conservation there is a whole community of us who are there to support you and i went 10 years with this big gap in my life and i was so scared picking up a camera after 10 years because i didn't even know whether i could do it anymore and look how much has changed for me in the last eight or nine years. So this is something that I really want to tell people that, you know, if, if you have children and you have family pressures, don't worry. It's never too late. If this is your passion, you can do it at any time and, and choose ways to reinvent yourself. That's, that's very important. Just
just one of the creatures that form the planet called Earth. You're one of them. You have done more damage than any other species that has existed on this planet. We need to change our behavior intrinsically. We encroach on the habitat of wildlife. It is not wildlife who is coming into our homes. Respect them, they will respect you. Guys.